The global food crisis is upon us, with world hunger a huge issue in developing countries. Yet, on the opposing side of food scarcity, food waste is a large problem as well, particularly in first world countries. At least 45% of all fresh produce goes to waste every year across the entire supply chain, with consumers in the United States disposing of at least a pound of food a day, most of it due to spoilage. There's so much produce spoils with the supply chain, in fridges or countertops of consumers, it is not all created and meant to be treated equally. If we know and understand how to store our produce in their preferred temperatures, we can then begin to store and buy with mindfulness, reducing our food waste individually. Produce is generally broken down into two categories, based on how they mature, release ethylene, and ripen. The two categories are climateric and non-climateric. Let's begin with climateric produce. Examples of those fruits classified as climateric include bananas, tomatoes, mangoes, peaches, apples, and avocados. Climateric produce as a whole emit a greater amount of ethylene as the fruit ripens, and after ripening peaks, the ethylene production drops off by a significant amount. Because of this, climateric fruit tends to ripen quickly and will develop flavor and aroma. Supply chains can use data and artificial ripening to pick climateric fruits and vegetables early while they are still green. They will then inject ethylene gas into storage units to get them to their desired ripening phase before selling them to the consumer. Non-climateric produce is quite the opposite and simply does not ripen after the product has been harvested. They react differently to ethylene and carbon dioxide levels when they come into contact with them. Examples of non-climateric produce include citrus fruits, such as grapefruit and lemon, berries, such as raspberry, strawberry, and cherries, grapes, pineapple, melons, including watermelon, and pomegranate. They only ripen while being attached to the plant or vine, and once harvested, the ripening process stops. I'm sure you've heard of some variation of the phrase, a bad apple affects the whole bunch. And there's a good reason for that. As a metaphor, it is quite literal in the fresh produce industry. High ethylene producing produce should not be stored with ethylene sensitive produce. Fruit that is damaged, bruised or punctured will produce more ethylene, causing the others to ripen, soften and spoil faster. To ensure optimum ripeness, ethylene management is one of the biggest priorities throughout the cool supply chain. Technology such as the post-harvest environmental sensor is used in cool rooms and in transport to help measure temperature, humidity, pressure, oxygen, and most importantly, ethylene levels. This highly accurate real-time ripening sensor allows cool room operators to monitor the health of fresh produce and gives operators an informed window of opportunity to make better decisions proactively stopping large losses of produce. The information and learnings we will get from having more of these microsensors will allow us to store more effectively in commercial storage and transport, and in effect, help consumers store produce better in their home fridges. To learn more about how you can help reduce food waste, head over to postharvest.com for free courses. And since you've made it to the end of this video, could you please do me a massive favor and click those like and subscribe buttons. Together we can help reduce food waste and play our part in saving the planet.